Hello, my name is Shra Heather Jamboy. I am a Varden Master, and I'd like to introduce Sri Alan Feldman, the Mergatma, the Living Varden Master. Thank you, Heather G. Um, greetings to this talk. We're going to be talking, this is not really an introductory presentation. Um, we're not going to be covering all the fundamentals, but we're going to be talking about an interesting subject. Um, we're going to be talking about risk-taking and mistakes and how these things are actually really good, which is which flies in the face of everything most of us have been taught in school <laughs> and in religion. And most of us are taught, we, they even have the term the straight and the narrow, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, But actually, mistakes are actually our friend. And it's really funny because... Um, we kind of learned this, and a lot of people forgot about it, but when we were little babies, you know, how do we learn to walk? Well, we learned to walk by making lots and lots of mistakes. We tried to get up, and we fell, and we tried to get up more, and we didn't have the strength. And uh, I don't even know if you call them mistakes, but I guess you could, because we'd fall on our tushes, and, and we'd get up. And our parents didn't, like, scold us and say, Bad baby, you fell on your tushy, stop that, don't do that again. Now, what if our parents had said, like, don't fall on your tush anymore? We wouldn't have been able to learn to walk because, because that was part of the process of learning to walk. So this is, this is so obvious. But then when we get older, we learn um, the mistakes are really bad. They're evil. Now, this pertains to, um, this talk pertains to Vardankar, the ancient science of out-of-body to the travel, which is uh, the same as soul travel, leaving one's body and traveling into these various planes. And this is way beyond astral projection, which is limited to the astral plane. So there's many planes that you can visit um, from the physical, the astral, the causal, the mental, the etheric plane, and even into the pure, what we call the pure positive God worlds, the soul plane, the LAL oak, the, the, there's so many different planes all the way up to the Anami oak on the 10th plane and, and beyond that into the ocean of love and mercy where dwells God in its pure state, which is the hue ray in the pure positive, not the Brahm or the cow, which is a male figure, which is light and darkness. But we get into the worlds beyond duality of good and bad, lightness, darkness, mountains, valleys. But in order to learn out-of-body Tusa travel, which goes beyond astral projection or astral travel, we have to be willing to make mistakes. But it's very important that we're under the watchful eye of a, of a true spiritual traveler or Varden master. And there are many Varden masters on the inner planes and some on the outer, such as myself and Heather G, who helped the Chilas or students learn out of body travel but it's very important to not look at it black and white like mistakes and and all of this but to be willing to make mistakes as we travel on on the most direct path back to god which is through out of body to the travel so i'm going to turn it over to heather g um, one of the things that i've noticed is that individuals that tend to be willing to take risks uh willing to make mistakes and take risks are tend to do uh, a lot move a lot quicker spiritually. Um, actually, I think I heard uh, uh, there was a baseball player. I believe he made the most outs. Uh, he was struck out the most, but he also had made the most hits or home runs. And that's significant because, um, you know, we're taught to believe that mistakes are always a bad thing. But it's not whether or not we make mistakes. It's whether or not we're willing to face the mistakes we made and learn from them. Um, I've seen people that are very spiritually evolved, but they just couldn't make it simply because they were not willing to face themselves and say, oops, I made a mistake. And because of that, they couldn't fix the problem and then the problem festered and became un out of control. But when we can face a problem while it's small, we can address it and overcome it. And and that is a good thing because then we can make a great deal of progress and develop a level of mastership in what we're doing, whether it's spiritual or anything. Um, so when somebody, so when you make a mistake and, and someone 
tries to make you feel guilty or bad for it, you need, it's important to let go of guilt and simply say, you know, I'm going to take a risk. You're a risk taker, a trailblazer. Someone like that is willing to, to make mistakes and learn. And, and, that's, and that's the whole thing with out of body twos of travel is the individual has to be bold and brave and willing and willing to sometimes not get all the results that they want, sometimes make mistakes, and then sometimes you'll have successes and you'll push through uh, by being able to face yourself. Absolutely. And it's also, I've noticed that some people, they get in a rut and they repeat the same exercises and the same techniques over and over again. It's like they make a decision about what they think works because maybe they had some success in the past and then they just keep repeating it and repeating it and then eventually it's almost it becomes stale it doesn't work very well but they're not they're afraid to admit that it's not working anymore it's like they're afraid so they keep trying doing it over and over again and they get into this rut instead of just admitting well it worked for a while but now it's not working anymore let me try something else and they might try other techniques and other methods that might not work either and then so it's like kind of also getting over this whole black and white, like you're either right or wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's either you're on the money and you're just, and you're doing things perfectly or you're bad and you're doing things wrong. Getting over that black and white, um, callistic or negative viewpoint and looking at things as, as consciousness, as pure consciousness. And so, um, mistakes are good. And like Heather G made up a, a really excellent point that when we admit them and we don't feel bad about it we can correct them and a lot of this ties in with true humility being humble and also it ties in with absolute reliance on the master on the inner master and relying on the Varden masters the true spiritual travelers who have gone before us <laughs> and it's very similar to a pr apprenticeship program I mean, if you wanted to be a great painter, for example, or a sculptor, and you went to a, a brilliant painter like Michael, uh, you went to Michelangelo to be an apprentice, and you were maybe really excited because he was such a great painter and sculptor, um, you would have to be humble before him. You'd have to be willing for him to criticize you and say, well, that, that's wrong, or, this is wrong. And you'd have to be able to take some flack, you know, in, in, in the interest and be humble in order to become a, a, a great master painter yourself. Otherwise, if you were, imagine if you were arguing with him constantly, like he'd make a suggestion, you'd be like, I don't agree at all. You know, you argue, you would be a really poor apprentice and you wouldn't make much progress. There are some people who have studied a particular path, whatever it is, for 20 or 30 years. And then they come to Vardenkar and they see him, you know, the master. And if they have the humility to allow themselves to be teachable, in his presence, they make incredible progress in a very short amount of time. There are others though, you know, in terms of humility, they have a hard time with letting go of the idea that they don't know everything and that they have all the answers within themselves. I mean, this is true, we, get, we can get the answers within ourselves, but by being humble before the master who has reached a high state of consciousness called God-realization, self-realization and God-realization, um, a lot of times the master will bring to us you know, just like on a sil like like handing us a silver platter from God, exactly what we need. I mean, I've I've seen some people, um, the you know the spiritual master will give them some some really incredible insights, and they are so proud that they don't really listen to what he's saying, and they say yeah yeah sure sure, and they don't really hear him. And then I've seen others where you know the master just hands them on a silver platter exactly exactly what they need and they follow out what he suggests and it's amazing the spiritual progress that they make almost overnight just by listening because they know they're listening to for god they're listening to god we we've been i agree Heather. uh we've been burned so many times by so-called gurus and masters and yeah. teachers that there seems to be a, a human tendency to to resist when it comes to spiritual things on the other hand, it's kind of amusing that when people have a, like they get, they become an apprentice and they're studying under a master carpenter, people are all ears because they, they can see the beautiful furniture that the master carpenter is making and they can see very clearly that this furniture is far more beautiful than anything they could make on their own. 
And so, um, so it's very obvious. But when it comes to spiritual masters and gurus, it's, it's interesting how people, because it's not so obvious sometimes, and this comes back to what Paul Twitchell said, the founder of, of um, the modern day founder, well, Vardenkar, he called it Ekankar you know, from 1965 to 1971. And now it's Vardenkar. Um, well, Ekankar still exists, but that's another story. But Vardenkar is the, is the most direct path. But Paul G. talked about um, the importance of repetition, of repeating over and over again, learning the fundamentals. And these are basic principles that exist in life. I mean, learning fundamentals. But there has to be, um, you have to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And it's amazing how many people don't have that. It's a matter of being ready. It's a matter of being coachable and willing and being humble and the master never asks us to take his word for it and just blind have blind faith what he asks is that you follow his instructions for leaving your body and a lot of people are really scared of leaving their body and um but what one has to remember is you're under the protection of the master that it's perfectly safe as long as you're under his protection and that this is a natural state to leave one's body the, the unnatural state is to be trapped in your skull and not be able to leave. But religion and metaphysics and all these different teachings generally teach people to stay trapped in their physical body. And some people may venture into the astral body through astral projection. But this is um, out-of-body Tuzza travel or soul travel, which is far, um, far, beyond, um, far beyond astral projection. Now... Fear ties in with being afraid of mistakes um, and risk-taking. A lot of people have so subconscious or conscious fears of leaving the body, of confronting themselves, and of confronting truth, and confronting masters. They're afraid that they're a bad person, that they're going to find out something bad about themselves, that they're going to leave their body and not be able to come back. There's all kinds of fears that people carry. And then they use the mistake, the fear of mistakes as an excuse. And so it's important to recognize this and realize that no harm can come to you unless you allow it. No, no harm can come to you unless it's in accord with your own state of consciousness. And so these spiritual masters are here for you if you're ready, if you, if you desire truth. But we're talking about the Varden masters who are experts in out-of-body Tusa travel, the ancient science of, of soul travel or Tusa travel. And they're here for a specific reason, to bring souls out of the lower worlds of duality into the pure positive God worlds and bring them to true self-realization and God realization. And so there should be no fear, um, although sometimes we deal with, with that fear. And so mistakes are a way of of moving and we're going to make them it's it's i don't even like to call them mistakes we're going to have experiences learning experiences we're going to experiment with different things like a scientist it reminds me of the story of thomas edison who had to try i don't remember what it was um over a thousand i can't remember the exact number but it was over i think it was over a thousand different filaments for his light bulb invention and people said, you know, weren't you discouraged if you tried hundreds and hundreds of filaments and they didn't work? And he said, no, I wasn't discouraged at all because every time I tried a new one that didn't work, I knew I was closer to finding the one that did work because I didn't have to try that one again. In other words, I had already tried it, so I was moving closer to my goal. And so that's really what it's all about. So if you do desire self-realization and God-realization, um, and there's other talks that we have on this uh, that you can listen to that go into more detail about what exactly out-of-body Tusa travel is. But the whole thing about being a risk taker, um, making mistakes or having learning experiences, not judging yourself and not condemning yourself. And know that the Hure or God loves you and that the masters love you a soul, your eternal self, and that God loves you and that there is no fear. Um, only in the lower bodies do we have imperfections in, in the physical body, the astral body, the mental body, causal body, the etheric body. 
only in the lower bodies and the past lives, this whole karmic um, experiences we've had, those are simply learning experiences. And so we can face ourselves squarely. Um, we can face our fears and we can focus on the light and sound, or the, the Varden, the sp spiritual current. And we can focus on the masters and on soul, our true self, rather than the astral body or the physical body. And we can overcome these um, various obstacles simply by focusing on what we want, if we truly want self-realization, God-realization. So um, we're going to wrap it up soon. We wanted this to be an unusually short talk for us. We usually talk longer. But um, Heather G, did you have any final thoughts to add? No, just may the blessings be. Well, may the blessings be. Baraka Bashan.